Use the methods of this section to derive a formula similar to equation 221 for the multiplicity of an Einstein solid in the low temperature limit. Uh, that means when the number of oscillators is uh, much much larger than the number of energy units. Uh, the book uh, had derived for you the other case, the high temperature where the number of energy units is a lot larger than the uh, number of oscillators and here we will go ahead and do the other case. Uh, it's going to be very similar. Uh, we will start with the uh, formula uh, that I derived in other videos if you're interested to see it um, uh, basically the formula that says the multiplicity if I have uh, uh, say n uh, energy units and q oscillators okay uh, actually let me just uh, uh, try to make a sense of this formula for you although this is probably not the video I should be elaborating on that uh, but uh, I will um, the uh, what we could do here let's say I want to figure out this multiplicity so we can represent the system uh, uh, by uh, some graphical analogy right uh, of the microstate of the Einstein solid so if I were to use uh, uh, dots to uh, if I were to use dots to represent the cues okay um, and uh, to represent each energy and I will use a vertical line to represent to, uh, to, to, to split between every oscillator and the next so let's say this is dot and then I here I have two dots and then uh, another two lines uh, and then here I have three dots so what this means is that um, I have one so so think of every line as being an oscillator and every dot as being an energy unit so what this is saying what this partition is saying is that I do have um, a, a, um, a first energy unit on the first oscillator uh, then the second oscillator has two the third oscillator has none because between the second two vertical lines there's nothing and then three energy units on the third um, and so on uh, so let's say let's say that this is a system with uh, four oscillators because there's no line on the first one and uh, and uh, this many energy units uh, one two three six okay so this would be uh, the microstate right uh, in which uh, uh, the one I just described now the uh, um, the uh, the microstate can be represented uniquely in this way right and uh, every possible sequence of dots and lines corresponds to a microstate so uh, Think of this on how many different sequences you can get out of these dots and these vertical lines. Okay, so how many dots? So we have technically we have q dots and we have n minus 1 lines because we have n oscillators, n minus 1 vertical lines. Okay, so that means the number of symbols will be the sum of these. So, uh, so I have this many symbols, right? So the number of symbols will just be uh, Q plus N. So this is N lines and this is Q dots. So it will be Q plus N minus 1. Okay. Uh, so this is a total of uh, Q plus N minus 1 symbols. Now, uh, given P and Q, uh, the number of possible arrangements that you're going to get is just the number of ways of choosing Q of the symbols to be dots. So that means Q plus N minus 1 choose Q. So this just becomes this is how many this these are all the different arrangements. This is our multiplicity. That this is sort of where this equation uh, comes from. Okay, which uh, uh, you know it becomes uh, Q plus N minus 1 factorial divided by Q 
q factorial and minus 1 factorial i did show in another recording on how to derive this so you could look it up if you want here i'm just going to use it okay so back now to this question so uh, we're going to use the uh, q less than n to figure this out okay uh, so uh, we're gonna start so we're dealing here with very large numbers uh, on the orders of uh, you know uh, tens with high powers um, and so what I'm gonna do uh, since if this is the case then I'm gonna say okay well uh, this is the same thing as uh, a Q plus n factorial over q factorial and factorial and uh, so that what i did is basically i ignored the minus one and uh, the grounds on which uh, this can be done is the fact that um, it's it's he, he also uses that in the first section uh, uh, sorry uh, on the first part where he derives the uh, formula for the uh, uh, low high temperature uh, th this approximation is valid because uh, if you divide n factorial over n minus 1 factorial okay this is just all the numbers multiplied up to n and uh, this is all the numbers multiplying up to n minus 1 okay and then you can cross these out and clearly you get n okay so this is a large factor n which is large however it's really insignificant uh, to a very large number like uh, capital Omega which is the multiplicity okay so uh, on those grounds uh, I can turn this formula into uh, Q plus n over Q factorial and factorial okay only when we're dealing with large numbers okay so back here now I'm gonna log both sides and if I do that, I will get LM, capital Omega. So uh, this will be uh, LM, this whole thing. And then I'm going to foil this by the properties of logarithms. So this will be Q plus N factorial minus ln q factorial minus the numerators are all minus ln n factorial okay now uh, uh, he, uh, there's a formula in your book equation 216 that says uh, ln Let me let me write this here. Ln of n factorial could be approximated as n ln n minus n. Okay, uh, ln and n minus n. Okay, so uh, so I'm gonna use that uh, to uh, simplify um, these here. Uh, each one of these because we have factorials these are very large numbers so back to the expression so then I get this so now in my case in my case Q plus n stands for n in that formula so this will be uh, Q plus n ln Q plus n then the same I will use the same uh, thing on ln q factorial so this becomes minus uh, q ln q uh, minus minus becomes plus q okay minus uh, n factorial or uh, sorry uh, n ln n or plus n 
Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we've got so here we're using by the way sterling's approximation in order to do this um, sterling's approximation let me let me write it here so here we are using sterling's approximation okay so we've got um, Oh wait, I forgot on the first term, the minus uh, q plus n term, term on this one here, sorry about that. Let me uh, stick it in. Uh, I'd like to put it where it belongs, so let me move this. I should have moved the other one, it's okay. Okay, not finished. This is moving slow, I apologize. Okay, so this there was here a minus Q minus N. The second time. Okay, good. So now you can see this can cancel that. Uh, this here. Uh, uh, this can cancel this. Yeah, uh, with Q minus Q, and this is uh, plus Q. It's supposed to be plus Q because minus minus. Okay, so we are left with Q plus N ln Q plus N minus Q ln Q uh, minus N Ln. Okay, now let's take this term to the side and see what we can do with it in the approximation that uh, n is much bigger than q. Now, if n is much bigger than q, that just means uh, q over n, right, is a lot smaller than 1, as is apparent if you divide both sides by n of this inequality by n okay so uh, now I could use the approximation we did earlier on that one question uh, where it said uh, ln I'm gonna take only this guy here so ln q plus n now in order to generate that less than one factor so I can use the approximation for the ln because the approximation for the ln is only useful when uh, the x term is much less than 1, I would have to factor out of here the n. So this would be ln n and then q over n plus 1. Or 1 plus q over n. Right, so I factored out the n from here so I can, my objective is to generate this guy so I could use this approximation here so I could use so so that I could use the fact that ln one plus x that I did I did it in, in a different question I think it was number uh, part D in number two twelve I don't remember if I did number two twelve however when I did number uh, just so you know whoever is watching uh, when I did number thirteen B I went back and. Uh, uh, did part D in number 212 which which turns out that ln 1 plus x uh, if you apply Taylor series on ln plus x it turns out to be 
uh, x when x is a lot less than one okay so this is what i'm trying to achieve with this so if q over n is a lot less than one after let me expand this first so this is ln n plus ln 1 plus q over n and if i use that approximation on this guy since q over n is a lot less than 1 the answer here will just be q over n so i get ln n plus q over n and this is again an approximation Okay, so now plug it back into my equation one here. Let's call this one. Plug in one. We get Q plus N times this. LN. Q plus n turned out to be ln n plus Q over n uh, minus Q ln Q minus n ln n okay let's foil these two here so we get Q ln n plus Q squared over n uh, plus n ln n plus Q and then the last two terms Okay, let's see if there's something we can simplify here. These can go away. And we are left with uh, uh, QLNN. So I could factor out QLNN from these two here. Minus LNQ plus q square over n plus q now if q over n is a lot less than one uh, then uh, q squared over n uh, is also a lot less than one and uh, we can just neglect that and so here we will get uh, Q L N N over Q plus Q. Okay, and then uh, we could uh, uh, exponentiate this. Uh, so uh, the multiplicity equal e raised to all that. Now, as you know from algebra. Uh, I could uh, r properties of the LNs I could raise this to the power so this becomes E LN N over Q to the Q mm -hmm. uh, times I could split this E to the Q now the first term is nothing but since LN has a base of e and this is e to the ln uh, we just get this guy out of this and so uh, this is equal n over q raised to the q times e to the q now since both of these are raised to the q i could just sum them together and I get my final answer 
uh, for this case the multiplicity is n e over I could lump them together I meant not sum them together uh, raised to the q Uh, this concludes the problem on how to derive uh, the formula for the multiplicity with large numbers in the low temperature element when the number of oscillators exceeds the number of energy units tremendously using Stirling's approximation.